Bryson, counselor and hypnotherapist. And I'm Eric T. Richter, publisher and editor. Welcome, Welcome to, to Maui Wellbeing. In each show, we visit with talented healers from all over Maui, experience demonstrations of their work, and then share what we've discovered with you. Today, we're at Ho'omana Spa Maui, a traditional Hawaiian healing and training center located in Makawao. We'll be interviewing its founder and director, Gina Ivalani Nalawai. Gina Ivalani Nalawai is a native Hawaiian Lomi Lomi practitioner committed to sharing her rich culture through the healing arts. She has been practicing body work for 18 years and is an international instructor of Lomi Lomi massage. She is both a licensed physical therapist and massage therapist. Gina has studied a broad spectrum of Hawaiian healing and spiritual traditions. Kahuna masters within her own family and beyond have blessed her in bringing this ancient wisdom. Mahalo, Gina, for joining us today and taking time out of your busy schedule to be with us on Maui Wellbeing. Thank you so much to both of you for having me. I enjoy sharing my culture. Gina, you have a beautiful center here. How did you get started and what types of therapies do you offer here? Well, uh, we've been doing this for eight years and the way that I got started um, was my husband and I and my family got together and hooled up and got this land. This is our family property. And for the last eight years, we've been planting native plants. We've been renovating all of the spaces. And what we've been doing in this space is offering Lomi Lomi instruction, offering Hawaiian healing therapies of all kinds, and um, opening space for people to come and relax and release and heal. It's such a peaceful and nurturing and healing environment. You've, your hard work has really paid off in this beautiful place. Thank you. Gina, could you tell us a little bit about your lineage? Yes, my um, family comes from Molokai, comes from Big Island. We were, um, in my family, we have our warriors. We were Lua people. We were, um, that's our martial art form. and. Originally, those were called the bone breakers. When I heard that, I, I thought, wow, that's not what I do. I do healing work. But then one of my kupuna told me, no, the, the final test of a, of a true warrior was to heal um, broken bones. And so I come from that. Um, my grandmother, who's 99 years old now, she was a hula dancer and a hula teacher. And um, we also are entertainers. I come from a long line of musicians and entertainers. So all the things that I'm practicing now are the things that we were doing in the, in the old days, um, in the healing arts, and also through Oli and chant, the things that I do now in my healing work. So Gina, who were your teachers for your healing work? Um, Auntie Margaret Machado. She's from Big Island, from Kealakehua area. She was my first teacher, and um, she also comes from a long line of kuhuna practitioners. In the old days, the children were chosen from a very young age, and they stayed with the elder um, many years, sometimes from seven years old, to learn all of the old ways. And Auntie Mahi, Lani Poipoi, was another one of my teachers. She was actually within my family. She was also in Alawai. And she um, was raised in Wainai, but grew up on Maui. 
she came from a lineage of um, La'au Lapa'au people, which is our Hawaiian herbal medicine, and she herself was a kahuna ha ha, which is a master diagnostician. And so she would look into the body to see exactly what was going on and down to the level where she could see if someone was not assimilating a vitamin or nutrient in their diet or whether they had some, you know, um, troubles going on within their family relationships, spiritual work she did as well. So she would read the people and then they would come and we would work on them. We were three students at her clinic down in Waihu. And the people would come and bring mangoes or <laughs> bananas or, you know, sometimes, you know, some pickled pipinola or something and um, sometimes five dollars. And they would come to the clinic and bring their animals, they'd bring their elders, they'd bring babies and auntie would read them and then we would work on them. How do you keep those ancient traditions alive here at the school and in your practice? Well, um, I loved what we did in our community clinic. Um, one of the things that we have is a Lomi Lomi school here. It's an apprenticeship program and we offer $30 Lomi Lomi sessions to um, the community. We have 10 apprentices each year that are with me for a year and they work on the people. They have to work on 200 people. So we are perpetuating what we are doing in Auntie's clinic here. We also um, see this, you know, as a hale, as a home. And in ancient times, if you were injured or something was going on with you and your family, you would go to Auntie's house and she would be in the village and everybody knew that she was the place to go. Her house was the place to go to receive healing. And when you got there, she would do anything from chanting, or offering spiritual prayers to you. She may do ho'oponopono with you and your family. She would dispense herbal medicines and definitely do lomi lomi body work as well. Today we see um, ho'omana spa Maui in the same way. This is my home. This is where I practice my healing work. When people come here, I want them to feel at home and like family. Uh, Tourists come here because they want to not only be entertained by Hawaiian culture, but experience Hawaiian culture. Um, our local community comes because they want to be a part of a Hawaiian community. And the Hawaiians come here because they want to reconnect with those things that our ancestors have practiced. Mm -hmm. And we offer um, Hawaiian scholarships for many of our workshops that we do so people can be supported by their healing art forms and work on their family. Wonderful. This sounds like a beautiful community that you have. You mentioned Ho'oponopono. What is that? Ho'oponopono is about bringing things back into alignment. So anytime you have the word ho'o in front of a, a Hawaiian word, it gives action. And pono means to make right, to be in righteousness, to be in balance or alignment. So when you put the two together, then um, it's about returning to alignment within yourself, within your space, with others, spiritual alignment, so and that relationships. So more like a counseling than body work? You know, it's both. Uh, because in the way that we do Lomi Lomi, um, the tradition comes from Big Island, and we are communicating down to the level of the bones. The Hawaiians believe that that is where our mana is. The Hawaiians also believe that that is where our ancestral support comes from, and all the stories of who we are on a soul level. And so when we're working with the body in this way to bring the body into alignment, the idea is that the spiritual body, the emotional body, and also the mental body will follow and return to alignment. So they really do go together. It's holistic alignment. Definitely. Gina, 
what innovations have you made? Well, um, I've taken those medicinal concepts that Auntie shared with me and that other practitioners that I've learned from have shared with me, Papa Sylvester Capolino, Dr. Makaali Yates, even Kahu Lions Naone of Maui here. And um, I've brought those herbal medicinal concepts into a spa setting. How can we use these things in a practical way today? So what I did was I, I took Auntie's innovation, original innovation of creating plant hydrosols because we used to go gather anywhere from the mountain to the ocean to get our medicine and sometimes that's private property or sometimes we can't always go and gather those things and so um, we take a plant hydrosol which is a distillation of the essence of the plant in water and we've created beautiful mists out of those so one of those is our tea leaf and rose hydrosol, tea rose. Tea leaf we've used traditionally for clearing and cleansing people and spaces, much like Native Americans have used sage. Mm -hmm. And uh, we also use it together with pa'akai, which is our, our Hawaiian salt, the blessed salt. And we put those together and we do healing ceremonies. Well, I put those into my hydrosol and I added one of the highest um, vibrational essential oils, rose, and it's so wonderful. So that's one of the things that we, that's one way. We also have an Ava Alai body mask that we do. Mm -hmm. Ava is a sacred drink to the Hawaiians and it's used medicinally to calm the nervous system, um, to relax the body. Uh, we also use Alai, which is our red dirt clay. Mm -hmm. And the clay draws impurities, but also has very, it's highly mineralized red clay. It has high iron content. And we've used that together to make a body mask and wrap the person for, you know, in heat for 15 minutes or so. And it's amazing just to watch the body just relax to a whole different level. Those are just a few of the things that we do in our, in our body treatments here to where someone could receive the medicine in a way that they may not have ever been able to or ever known about a plant that we use for medicine here. How do you source the plants and the other materials that you use in your healing practice? Many of the plants that we use here, we have grown. Um, eight years ago when we first got this property, Auntie Gordine Bailey of Halao Behivehi Olelehua, who is my halao that I dance hula with, came and donated many native plants and came and helped us put them in the ground. And over the last eight years, we've planted many more ourselves. And so we do gather from the land here um, in one of our body treatments, which is a Hawaiian herbal tea bath. We actually have the guest, the spa guest, go out and gather their own herbs from the land. And the therapist goes out with them, shares with them about this plant and this plant, what we use it for, and they get to gather all their herbs and we package it all together with Hawaiian salt and ava. And um, it's nice to have that opportunity to share with someone about not only our gathering ways, but also um, about our connection to the land. We talk about malama aina, you know, love of the land, and how we ask these plants that want to be used for healing to assist us in our work. And even as they're in the tub, or as I'm using some of these um, you know, body treatments on people, I really, I pray to the plants and ask them, for their medicine. Connecting to the spirit of the plant. Absolutely. Connecting mm -hmm. to the spirit of the plant. How do you gather the plants? Traditionally, we um, will go out into nature. We will have meditated, um, oftentimes on the person that we're gathering for, or just go into quietness to listen, um, to know even where to go to gather. And We'll go out in nature and ask the plant to reveal itself. Not just to reveal which plant wants to be used, but what it would like to be used for. Uh, we do the same when we go and gather stones that we use for our hot stone therapies. Traditionally, stones haven't been used um, with oil rubbing along the body in a heated stone. That isn't necessarily the way that um, the old ones practiced it, but Stones were used in healing, so we would take the stone, we would place it over a tea leaf or a noni leaf, and the heat would infuse 
the body with this herbal medicine. We would also use hot stones in a calabash or in an ipu gourd. And we would put the herbs inside, spring water, and the heated stone, and that would create teas. Many of our formulas were either a wash or a tea you took internally, or we would pound the plant into a poultice and lay it over a wound or put it over the body, much like we do in our body treatments here. And you would gather odd numbers. One would always go back to honor the gods, you know, the ones that watch over us, our kupuna. And we do the same here when we gather. We leave one for the altar and we gather um, the rest for our treatment. Gina, you also offer extensive training in Hawaiian healing here. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Absolutely. The teaching is one of my favorite things to do. Um, I'm Hawaiian Portuguese and we have no problem talking story. And that's really the, the teaching style. It's the way we've always learned. In, in our culture, we learn to, you know, na nai kamaka, look with the eyes and the inner vision. You know, we learn to ho'olohe ka pepeao, which is to listen with that inner listening, um, to close the mouth. Pa'akawaha, which is, you know, to come quiet so that you can really hear the ancestors speaking to you and then to work with your hands. So this is the way that I teach even now. Um, it's the way that I learned as well. So even when I learned, we didn't really have a syllabus or anything like that. Now they have a syllabus. I've sort of bridged the way that we used to do things into the way we do things now. Uh, but I keep those old traditions in the teaching style and the information is definitely something that's been passed down. And we offer weekend workshops, week-long trainings. We have a month-long immersion coming in September where people can come and learn the foundational work um, that begins with our Lomi Fundamentals. That's basically the foundation with which all the classes that we do here builds upon. In that class, I talk about our timeline, where Lomi Lomi came from, what has happened over time, you know, how we practice Lomi today. Um, I talk about Ho'oponopono because it's very important that a student understands that it's not just a massage technique or a massage modality, that it has more to do with a holistic approach to working on the whole being. And in that level, we work on the muscles, learning to release the muscles and relax the muscles. And as the classes build, they all build one upon the next. The next layer is the tendons and the ligaments. And in our advanced training, we work at the level of the attachments, ultimately with the intention of bringing the body back into alignment. So if everything's released in the body, just a very simple stretch will allow the bones to come back into alignment. And when the bones come into alignment, everything else also aligns. That has been the, the message through this whole time, is talking about aligning the thoughts and the emotions and the spirit and the body. And that's, that's really beautiful. So we have a sense a little bit of what a treatment is like. What are, what are some of the other benefits? of these healing modalities that you use? Um, well, every aspect of what we do has its own healing medicine. So from the chants and prayers that we offer, that we've been passed down from, you know, the Kumu who have taught us um, these traditions, those have their own mana. The plants have their own healing properties as well and, and their own energetic. Um, the stones. They're, I call them my magic stones because they just are received by the body in a way that sometimes I wouldn't be able to get there as quickly or as deeply. The body will receive the stone. It has its own way of communicating with the body. And um, then within the Lomi Lomi work itself and the intention of the practitioner, um, we you know, work on injuries at the therapeutic level. We work, like I shared before, um, with Ho'oponopono and talking story and 
un unraveling and revealing sometimes the source of what's really going on. And it's not always physical. Right. Many times, um, you know, it's kind of like being a tracker. You track to the source and sometimes the herbs aren't needed. You know, sometimes it just is that you needed to help the person with that spiritual, emotional aspect and the physical ailment will slip away. Yeah, it's exciting. I'm arm wrestling Eric to see which one of us is going to win a session of Lomi Lomi with Gina for after the break. So stay tuned. Thank you.